Hi, everybody. Uh, before I start, I, I want to uh, send condolences to uh, Dwight Clark's family. Um, all of us with the Warriors are, are thinking about uh, Dwight and his life and his impact in the Bay Area. Um, I personally did not know him, I did not meet him, but I'm friends with several of his 49er teammates, and I know how devastated they are. And um, such a, a sad day for for all of us, and we're thinking about the family. And um, just wanted to pass that along before we get get going. First question, standing on the left. Paul Antunes from ESPN Brazil. Um, up to zero. I mean, it's it's a game of desperation for them. How easy is it for for you up to zero to get a little complacent and you know and tough to match the energy of the team that's desperate? Yeah. Well, we've been here before, um, and and that's the biggest thing. We've been here the last three years for um, a game three. First year was one one. Last two years we were up two zero. Um, all three games were really, really difficult, and so we're we're used to that. We're used to the dynamic of uh, being ahead in a series and then having everything shift when you go on the road. But especially when you play Cleveland, LeBron, um, this crowd, uh, and their their environment, we know the kind of force they're going to bring, and we have to be prepared for that. We know it. We'll see if we can do it. Scott here. Scott Osler, San Francisco Chronicle. Steve, your thoughts on the, the Eagles situation and on your team and your kind of being in the forefront of that, what's going on now? Um, it's not surprising. Uh, I think, um, you know, the president has made, made it pretty clear he's going to try to divide us, all of us in this country, for political gain. Um, so um, it's just the way it is. Uh, I think... Um, you know, we all look forward to the day when it can, we can go back to just having a celebration of athletic achievement and celebrate uh, um, Americans for their, their achievement, their good deeds. Um, the irony is that, uh, you know, the Eagles have been nothing but um, uh, fantastic citizens in their own community. They've done so much good. I've read a lot about their team, Malcolm Jenkins, um, Chris Long, uh, these guys are studs. They're amazing. Um, so it'll be nice when we can just um, get back to normal in three years. <laughs> Michael in the back center. Uh, Michael Lee with Yahoo Sports. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. <laughs> Do you have an update on Andre, and um, how would you plan on using him if he is available? He's uh, he's doing better. He, he played uh, yesterday um, some one-on-one. -on -one. Is some full court drills, and he told me he's feeling better. So uh, I would upgrade him to questionable. Um, he'll go through practice today, and we'll see how he feels after that and tomorrow. But I think he's getting closer, and I'm I'm hopeful that uh, that he can play. Uh, if not tomorrow, then in game four. But again, it's day to day. And there was an exchange, I think, uh, with Jordan Bell. I think at the end of the third quarter, where he committed that foul on LeBron, and he sort of lectured him a little bit on the bench, and then Jordan forced a steal. What's it like just having him around, just even though he wasn't playing, but still having some sort of influence uh, with the guys? It's another coach. He's literally another coach. He uh, he pulled us aside during game one, um, during a timeout, and made a suggestion, uh, something defensively. And we did it, and it worked, and it wasn't surprising. But Andre uh, has that kind of a impact on our team. Uh, he's uh, one of the smartest basketball minds I've ever been around. Go ahead, Mark, second row. Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Steve, after the game uh, Sunday night, Draymond called Clay probably the toughest guy he's ever played with. And you don't normally think of Clay as Mr. Tough Guy. Why is it that we don't think of him that way? And what is it that Draymond was getting to about his toughness? Uh, just that he's there every single day. Uh, he's never missed a playoff game. Uh, he's only missed a handful of games in his entire career. Some of them were because I insisted on giving him a rest. Um, but he finally missed some time this year with the wrist injury. Wrist, thumb, what was it? Uh, wrist. Wrist, yeah. Um, but he's just there. He's like a machine every day of practice. Um, Unless he sleeps in and misses practice, which he's done a couple times. Uh, but he's just there. Um, you count on him. You just count on him every day. And, and toughness is often um, looked at, I think, to answer your question. A lot of people think of toughness and they think bravado. But toughness is uh, also a quiet, 
um, confidence and a, and a resilience and um, I think Clay embodies that. He just he's there for us every night. Doesn't say much, but we can count on him every day. Tim in the back left. Tip Calcom of the Athletics. Steve, you've got friends in the NFL. I, I don't know if you've heard from them. I, I've heard from them maybe pushing back on some of your comments about the anthem. Uh, have you heard anything? Uh, and they point out that the NBA has a policy also where players must stand for the anthem, and I believe there's some understanding they can stay in the back. If one of your players wanted to actually protest on the anthem, would you be okay with that? Would you understand that? Yeah, of course, because uh, you have to... Uh, understand that what players have protested is not the military. Uh, they're protesting police brutality and racial inequality. So if anybody, any American wants to protest that any time, then that's their right as Americans. That's what the military fights for is free speech. So uh, I would be perfectly fine with any of our players doing so. I think the point I was trying to make a couple of weeks ago is that the NBA uh, has always been very, um, very much a partner uh, with the union and with the players in this uh, this issue, and I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, we um, have gone through this together, and and there haven't really been um, any issues in the NBA. Um, players are very socially active. Teams and uh, management and the league itself are very supportive of uh, not only community service, of course, but um, you know political commentary. And so it's just a partnership, and that's that's the point I was making, comparing it to the NFL. Jeff on the left side on the aisle. Jeff Shudell, News Herald. Uh, Steve, the Cavaliers are saying they want to get a more physical with you guys tomorrow and, and Friday. I'm sure you've seen that before, but so how do you combat that? Well, uh, that's their advantage. You know, they're bigger and stronger. Um, They've beaten us up on the boards a little bit. Uh, you have to combat that with uh, smart play, boxing out, making sure you're putting a body on people. Uh, you can't. We can't leave. You know, a guy one on one against Tristan Thompson, trying to box him out. Um, you got to get multiple bodies in there, and then we've got to be ready uh, for their pressure defensively. We got to execute. We got to take care of the ball. Monty over here, and then Mark up front. Monty Pulu, NBC Sports Bay Area. Steve, <clears throat> what do you remember last year with game, not game three, but game four? I mean, you guys came in with a chance to actually sweep the postseason. What did you see from the Cavs, and what did you see from your team in that game four? Uh, I think they made like 24 threes. Is that right? Something like that. Something like that. Threes. They made a ton of threes. I think they shot uh, maybe 28 free throws in the first half. Um, I might be wrong on that. Um, so there was, they brought the force that game, and we fouled a lot, um, and we, uh, we were not uh, at our best. So we're, we remember all that stuff. We've got to be better. Mark, last one here in the front. Hey, Steve, Mark, Medina, Bay Area News Group. Steve, how have you seen this season the dynamic with uh, Steph and Kevin play out in terms of knowing when it's best for one of them to get going or both? Uh, there's just a, a, a sense that we're all on the same team and nobody cares about um, whose team it is and all that stuff. Our guys just play. And uh, there have been games where KD has had to take over. There's been games where Steph takes over. And there's lots of games in between. We literally never have a, a conversation about who needs to take over. Uh, what we do is we decide where are we going to attack you know, how are we going to attack? And uh, every team presents a different challenge. Every opponent does. And so we try to find areas where we can uh, attack and take advantage of matchups and give ourselves the best chance to score. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Kevin Durant will be.